Спасибо. Hey there, fellows. Alright, so we got a lot of requests to take a car. With a fully operational motor, of course. Remove the gearbox, take a bunch of flywheels. And proceed to... Start adding them on one at a time. Attach a large amount of flywheels to a motor and see how it operates. Anyway, so I've got myself these here flywheels. These are resurfaced, which is to say that we didn't make them any lighter. Here's our car, which is packing a motor. So we remove the box, cut out the transmission tunnel so that we can get a better view without having to lift the car. Then we try this out and see what changes occur. Let's do this. What if you were to install five flywheels onto an engine? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. We are looking very good. We've bolted on a second flywheel. We just needed to use some longer bolts. They were way longer than we needed. So we had to put a few washers in there too. These do need to be bolted down tight. We've got them perfectly centered. Right here you've got the pins that center the clutch pressure plate. These are high quality, so everything worked out very nicely. They're perfectly on center. Okay, so we've got two of them on there. Why don't we bring her down, fire up the engine and give it some gas? See whether the engine is smoother to operate. Or perhaps it'll be tougher to start. We don't know yet. Bring her down. Start the car. Let's give it some throttle. At a quick first glance, nothing seems to have really changed. The difference is actually quite tangible. I'm sure you can hear it. It's very slow to build them revs. Very lazy. And it takes a longer time for the revs to come down than if it were to have just the one flywheel. Though we assumed that after installing a second flywheel, without fitting a clutch disc and pressure plate, or anything else for that matter, we thought that nothing would really change. But the change is pretty evident. With that added weight, the engine is having a tougher time revving. It requires way more energy to get the revs up. There is more power going to that than usual. Fuel and everything else. Also, the engine speed drops much slower than it used to. And that drop seems to be smoother. I think it's time for us to add another one. And see what happens after that. Check this out, fellas. We are looking... very good indeed. We successfully got that third flywheel on there. We centered it using those pins, just like we did the first time. Plus we removed the washers from underneath those long bolts. The bolts are too long no more. That third flywheel effectively offsets the lack of washers. Naturally we've gained a bit of weight. Three flywheels. I'm guessing the crankshaft will still be able to handle them all. Right, it's time we start the engine and see what's up. How it operates, how it even starts in the first place. Alright, let's do this. We're about to see it all for ourselves. Let her rip, man! So after letting the engine warm up slightly, it's running nicely. That's full throttle right there. The revs are barely climbing. It's taking quite a while. And all because of the extra weight. And they're pretty slow to drop, too. Now, in terms of operation, this no longer reminds me of... A lot of motor. I mean to say that now it's very different in how the engine speed goes up and down, like it's a completely different animal. What's interesting is that... I can hear some kind of weird noise. It doesn't even seem to be a knocking sound. More like it's rubbing. Perhaps it's because the crank is bearing so much load on one side, and that messes with the clearances. Or maybe I'm hearing things.
see how long it takes? Everything happens very slowly. Let's throw the fourth one into the mix and see what that does. We doing this? Hi fellas, check out this sandwich that we made using four flywheels. We're currently at four, and it looks pretty... How do I even say this? Honestly, that looks pretty dodgy. I mean, seriously. Four flywheels? That's just so much weight. Seven kilos, yeah? Seven times four is 28 kilograms. Oh my god, 28 kilograms. Then you've got those six bolts. 28 and a half kilos. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. We've got the four flywheels on there. Time for us to do some testing. Okay, so that's four flywheels, 28 kilos. Can the starter even spin them? That was a joke. Well, it started, and it's running at idle. Let's see where them revs are at. Nothing seems to have changed. The engine is still vibrating like it always used to. It's not that bad, of course. Now what if I... This is taking forever. This is full throttle, look. That's just what you get with a really heavy flywheel. It just takes the longest time for the revs to climb, though it's even more pronounced on the way down. So you get it up to max RPM, release the throttle, and it... So when the revs almost reach idle, there seems to be some kind of weirdness going on with the timing chain. My guess is that the tensioner has fallen apart. So the point of this experiment was to see how much of a change there'd be. And indeed, we're seeing some pretty dramatic changes in engine operation. Even when you add just one extra flywheel, you can already tell that there is a big difference. It's as if someone's inside the car and slowly letting off the gas pedal. Okay, so that's four flywheels. Let's install number five. So we found a bit of hardware for these flywheels, all of which seems to be what we need. Meanwhile, the main problem is this stuff. These bolts with their 1.25 millimeter thread pitch, they're not meant to be made from soft metal. So it's a 10 by 1.25 out of soft metal. As I'm sure you can imagine, a bolt like this can easily stretch out, bend, break. Lots of bad things can happen to it. What a bummer, man. Well, there's really nothing we can do. So ultimately, this is what we decided to do. Before we were observing to see what changes occur in engine operation, how slow it would be to build revs or come back down, and it turned out to be really slow. Anyway, how about we fit a clutch to those four flywheels, attach a gearbox, and drive around? That'll give us an even better understanding of how things change. I'm expecting this to be pretty good fun. Let's do this. Okay, so here's the situation. The gearbox is in place. It wasn't even terribly hard to mount. So when you're moving the gearbox away, you're going to have to slap on a few spacers, right? Which is exactly what we have done. I mean, we could have chopped the bell housing off of one gearbox and welded it onto another one, but what's the point? It's not that big of a change. And so instead, we fitted a few spacers that we made out of some metal tubes. Now, if we look at the clutch, I mean the hydraulic line that's routed to it, we did have to chop the bracket, given that the line is pretty short. So yeah, we moved that back. It all works, that's what matters. 
This spacer right here, it was already there before. We chopped it in order to mount the starter motor. Here the spacers are a bit smaller. We've got some aluminum in those spots. Or attaching the starter motor. So all of this fits together like a dream. Right, so we moved the gearbox back, meaning that we had to shorten the prop shaft. We actually have our very own machine, which makes quick work of that sort of job. And you even get a quality result. We did all the necessary cutting and welding, everything is where it needs to be. I guess we're ready to head out and do some testing, see how the car behaves on the move. Okay, so I'm inside, everything is good. Time to start the engine. Nice. Turn on the heater, just in case. We are going outside after all. Let's roll. Well, it does set off. I'm also gonna drive that way. Oh, I really feel it now. We are obviously experiencing some wheel spin. But if I were to press the gas a bit harder, the engine really hesitates to rev. It gets there. But it's not what you're accustomed to. It's not nearly as snappy as it's supposed to be. This is a very different thing. And again, I mean, no surprises. Okay, we got some wheel spin. Okay, so one tire is not gonna propel this thing. We're not running a welded diff in this car. Come on, move. The steering wheel is at full lock. Yeah. We're just used to running welded diffs. And plowing through absolutely anything thanks to those. Come on now. It's not necessarily a bad thing that we've got wheel spin. It's actually quite convenient to rock the car back and forth on this setup. No need for a ton of throttle input. Since even at low RPM, those flywheels are giving you plenty of useful inertia. So in that sense, they're actually pretty helpful. I'm not sure if you guys noticed or not, but there wasn't a single moment when I felt that the car was on the verge of stalling. Okay, so when you let off the gas, everything becomes clear as day. It feels like we've lost compression in the cylinders. You completely let off the gas and the car just keeps on rolling, forcing you to brake even. This is quite unusual. Typically, when you ease off the throttle, you immediately get an engine braking effect. Not here, though. It just keeps on going. Like, completely unfazed. And when you give it the full beans, it takes a while for it to pick up. Now, that was steam. Okay, so the exhaust is touching the snow. That creates steam, which then makes it into the cabin. So nothing to worry about then. Looks like someone's stuck. I'm curious to try something out. Okay, so if you cane it, well, isn't that a lovely effect? It is having quite a hard time in third gear, though. I'm off the throttle. Third gear and we are just rolling. It is decelerating slightly, but not like it should. You can tell that the engine braking is much less effective. The car no longer really has that ability. Setting off is quite pleasant, though. Everybody who's taking driving lessons in a manual car absolutely needs to have an engine with this amount of flywheels. So we're running 28 kilos worth of flywheels. 
and an entire clutch assembly. That's 30 plus kilos right there. Seems like the clutch isn't keeping up. Here's what's happening. I bring the revs up really high. I have the engine at high speed. I change from second to third gear, release the clutch. See, the revs haven't dropped yet. They're still pretty high, so when I release the clutch, the pressure plate and the gearbox are trying to reel that motor in. You can feel the clutch slipping in that moment. There's just too much weight. Oh my. I let off and it just keeps going. And going. And going. We'd have already stopped on a regular flywheel. Let's discuss the results of today's experiment. We fitted a few flywheels to this motor, and it takes a considerable amount of energy to get that sandwich spinning, given it weighs 30 kilos. Though it does get there, slowly but surely. Now, when you shut off the butterfly valve, the revs are supposed to pretty much immediately drop to idle. Here, though, that's simply not the case. It takes a long time for them to drop when you're running this kind of setup. Since weight translates to inertia, that sandwich is going to continue to spin for quite a long time. You hear that? This just takes forever. First of all, setting off in this car is very simple. Again, with that kind of weight, you just ease off the clutch with no throttle, and you don't get that effect when the engine is jerking around and almost stalling. You know what it's like when a beginner doesn't give it enough gas on a normal flywheel? If you let off the clutch early, you stall, but here you don't get any of that, because of all that weight. That's what's propelling the car forward. And since it is the winter, you do get some wheel spin. That said, you do get moving. The car just doesn't even care. That's a nice bonus. So the purpose of a lightweight flywheel is to make the engine snappier. Even if you remove so much as 200 grams, you're still gonna feel like you're driving a race car all of a sudden. The problem being that you're constantly riding the gas pedal. Here that's completely unnecessary. You just give the gas one hit, and off you go. And there's no need to blip the throttle when shifting gears either. That's something I quite like. When you can shift gears and not have to think about whether you give it some gas or let off, when you can just ease off or release the clutch and the car keeps moving without any sort of jerkiness, shuddering and so on, when it just keeps on going. Well, at least when you're in second gear and higher. And that does it for this one. Oh yeah, and one more thing I'd like to share with you. Now, I was actually expecting the crankshaft to snap, what with one end of it having to bear so much weight. It is made of iron, after all. And as far as the balance is concerned, there didn't seem to be any sort of horrible imbalances, so that's pretty nice. Okay, I'd say we're looking at a 107% success rate here. Everything works beautifully, nothing fell apart. And that's all I have for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.